There's some madness taking place these days in the Trinity Gardeners Garden, and it's a combination of two things: a combination of plants that are just wayward, and the gardener that doesn't have as much time as he would like to spend in the garden. So things are just doing whatever they want. For instance, this massive tree you see behind me. Are you just seeing one tree? Are you just seeing one plant? I'll take out a leaf. I'll take this one. And I'll take a leaf of this one over here. There you go. Okay, two leaves. There you go. Up. Leaf one, leaf two. It's not the same plant. This is not the same plant. This is a combination of two plants. Where is my seat? It's a combination of two plants. This one is sorrel, better known as Rosella. Trinidad, we call it sorrel. And it's also known as hibiscus plant as well, hibiscus flower. Um, not the hibiscus flowers, but it's called the hibiscus, um, which is just another word for sorrel. And this is same, a bean. It's a family to the snow peas, um, family to body. It's all just beans. And um, yeah, it's two plants growing in one. And we're going to be talking about what's been taking place in the garden, this bit of madness, Christmas madness, and we're accepting it. It's a time for that playful bit of Christmas magic. Let's get going. Hello everyone, thank you all so much for joining in. This is Dylan from the Trinity Gardener channel, and I'm really happy, excited for this video, because it's a bit of madness in the garden, and every once in a while, especially when you're a busy kind of bee buzzing around doing all kind of activities, it's a season for being also very busy, it's good to just kind of accept whatever your garden gives you. There's going to be good things, there's going to be bad things, there's going to be crazy things. And today I think is an example of crazy things. But it's also something I think we can tie to a topic and a video I had done a few months ago on the Tree Sister method of gardening. So the Tree Sister method of gardening was a gardening technique. Well, not was, it still is a gardening technique that it's credited to the Uruquai, which is a native Amerindian tribe, um, originally from, the, from North America. But I don't think it's something we can just credit to probably North America. Just, I would say, it's an ancient Amerindian technique for gardening. And it's a gardening technique whereby you have three kinds of crops. You have one crop that's supposed to be the sturdy crop. You have a vining crop. And then you have a ground cover crop. Right? Now, I have uh, two out of those three happening here in the garden. And that's the reason for this bit of a mess, crazy situation here. So, I have a sturdy crop. That is my sorrel slash rosel slash rosella slash hibiscus. Um, so like right here, I could snap off one of the tiny um, sorrel pods from where you get your sorrel, where you can brew and make your jam, your drink, your jelly, your alcohol, whatever you want to do with this sorrel here. And on the same plant, not on the same plant, but in the same kind of area, all from all as the same plant, I can pick something which is a bean. There we go. So in this case here, our city plant is our sorrel. That's this plant here. And then our vining plant is same. This is same, right? It's a bean. It's a pole bean, meaning pole beans um, just means that they don't just grow up on their own, such as you would find with the contender bean or even with string beans. These beans normally need some kind of structure to go up. Now, normally in like commercial farming, they'll get like um, just lengths of bamboo or any kind of wood and they'll have the beans going up on that. Or even if you use like a net or a string trellis video right here on how to make your own um, really cheap string trellis to you can grow your beans on. I actually have a same growing on a string on part of the string trellis right now. Um, but in a tree system method of gardening, which is an amazing type, amazing method of gardening, if you want to remain 100% organic and also keep the amount of input, the amount of things coming into your garden from off your property to a minimum, then you use something like a tree system method of gardening, whereby you use the plant that you are growing. So you'd plant this first, you'd plant the, the sorrel first, your sturdy plant. And then when this plant is getting to be adolescent, then you plant your peas, your, your beans. Because the vine and bean grows a lot faster. So if you were to plant the bean first, then and then plant the city plant, then the bean would be sprawling all over the ground, and then you wouldn't have anything to go up. So the rosella, the sorrel was planted first, and then when the sorrel was probably around two months old, so it would have been about three feet high at that point. Then we planted the beans, and now the beans are just kind of taking over, and it's kind of going crazy. It was running all on this vine here. We needed to hang some clothes 
So I had to remove it from the vine. It was just a crazy thing, but it's also a really cool thing, especially in this season here where I do find that the, um, the combination of those two, it helps the plants to have that sort of symbiotic relationship whereby one provides the sturdiness, one provides a bit of protection, extra bit of, it's like a sacrificial plant as well, same is, because I do find that when I plant same next to my sorrel, the same is what gets attacked by insects and the insects do like sorrel because sorrel has that sweet, that deep red texture that insects do like and they can't destroy. But they were so taken up by the same because the same had softer leaves that they left the sorrel alone. So it's a bit of companion planting in that sense. Not saying that same and sorrel is generally a good combination. It's just what has worked for me in my garden here. And I think that um, I will also put up a video of that original video, Aruchi Sister Method of Gardening. Now, I said three sisters. The first sister being the city plant, that's the oldest sister. Second sister being the vining plant, that's the sister that's sort of wild and, you know, going up all over the place. And then the third sister is the sister that keeps you grounded. And normally what you would have is you'd have some kind of ground cover. The purpose of the ground cover is that it allows the soil to remain nice and shielded from excess rain to avoid topsoil runoff and also from excess heat that can burn off those microorganisms and those little garden helpers that we talked about so much at length in last week's video. Feel free, there's a link over here to go and see last week's video on that and how these little helpers, these microorganisms, these beneficial bacteria and fungi in your garden do help, especially when you have a 100% organic garden. Now, in terms of ground cover, I don't have one here, but your ground cover could be a plant like pumpkin, um, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, even though that's a little bit less popular in Trinidad and for good reason they just don't grow as well as the sweet potato in Trinidad um, and also you can use things like squash um, certain types of um, you know winter squash summer squash it'll all be fine in Trinidad because we can grow all these things year round we don't have to wait on a specific season to grow any of these things the only thing of course is you know you choose an area that has fair to find drainage it's really sad but it's also kind of frustrating to see people planting in places where it generally floods. Because if the flood comes, it's going to destroy your plants. So, you know, plant in places that make sense. Of course, this would be really good if you have a hill, but not everybody has that kind of infrastructure. So take steps to safeguard your garden and do the things that you can do within your power to help your garden. And also another point concerning the tree system method of gardening, which is a little bit of a misnomer, is that it's usually said that if you plant the second system, which is the bean, you're going to put back nitrogen into the soil. This is true up to a certain point. As we're here, we'll talk about it. You do have with beans, any kind of legume, that ability to do what is called nitrogen fixation, where they are able to take nitrogen out of the air and guard it in the, um, keep it in the roots. All right. So more or less, our atmosphere is made up of majority nitrogen. We're not able to really use that nitrogen as humans, but plants are able to use it. They're able to pick up on it and legumes more so. They're able to actually pull that nitrogen out of the air and then store it in their roots and what that nitrogen does nitrogen in general in your garden is going to help with leafy growth any kind of vegetative growth when your plants are in that vegetative state nitrogen is what is going to be helping for the most part to produce that new growth and the beans legumes they do have an ability to store the nitrogen in their roots and they do store it so if you were to for instance take a plant that has stored nitrogen in the roots and let the plant decompose that's important decompose and how does it decompose because of the garden helpers the microorganisms like the beneficial bacteria and beneficial fungi they break down the roots and then that allows the nitrogen to now be dispersed into the soil to then help grow your plant this theory however does not work if you let the beans go to harvest meaning that you let the beans produce because the plant stores the nitrogen in the root for the purpose of helping the plant to grow and produce fruit. If the plant is allowed to stay, to grow and produce fruit, to produce the beans, like I just picked up one from here, the same, then the plant is going to use those very same nodules of nitrogen in the root to produce that fruit. So therefore you don't get the same benefit of the nitrogen when the plant is decomposed in the soil. So what you would do if you really are growing beans or legumes for the purpose of nitrogen fixation and to put nitrogen back in the soil, you would have to let the bean grow, 
as soon as it starts to flower, you terminate the plant, meaning that you cut the plant down, cut it down on the root, maybe mulch it up a little bit and just let it stay in that spot and it will decompose and then the nitrogen that it took out of the air, it's going to now be able to disperse and have that be entirely used now by the upcoming plant in that same plot of land and that's how that works. Okay, so I really hope that you have enjoyed this one. I really hope that it's shown you that you don't need to worry at all if your garden is getting a little bit out of hand because a lot of the times letting it go is one of the best things you can do for your garden and your own mental health. You shouldn't just be around worrying about your garden being perfect all the time. That's one of the things where we have a all year round growing season is that we don't have a time where we kind of just disconnect people and live in temperate countries. Like right now, it's basically off season. Plants are for the most part moved inside or you just don't have your garden anymore it's just too cold for that the store is going to be coming soon so in that case they have a chance to just reconnect with themselves and also to just kind of disconnect from the garden we don't have that in Trinidad so every once in a while it's good to just take a step back let nature do its thing you're going to have situations that are going to be nice some are going to be less nice but the point is you made the most out of every moment you don't worry about every little thing and you of course if you're able to you have some plants that are going to be able to power through whether you're there all the time or not because we are getting rain these days so you know if you don't spend too much time in your garden it's not the end of the world i really hope of course that you would share this video with somebody who would be interested in this kind of content who wants to learn more about growing healthy organic food to become more self-sustainable and to be able to provide for themselves and their family remember you can follow us on instagram tiktok and on facebook to see more content coming to Trinity Gardeners Garden and feel free to tag us on any of those platforms where we're so happy to see you all in your gardens just doing your own thing, spending time with yourself, spending your time with nature and spending time with your family and of course your friends or neighbors. Remember as always this has been Dylan from the Trinity Gardener channel reminding you to get up and get growing. Take care.